Hello, I am Michael Trotter, and today I'll be presenting research entitled, Rumor Has It, Optimizing the Belief Propagation Algorithm for Parallel Processing. This talk will have the following structure. First, I'll provide an introduction and background to the research. Then I'll go over the design and an evaluation of it. And finally, I'll provide a conclusion of the research. So what is belief propagation? Belief propagation models how changes to some event nodes affect their neighbors and which in turn affects their neighbors as the change permeates throughout the entire network. Each event node is associated with a belief, that is the probability distribution of an event being in a certain state, for example, a binary state like true or false, or many states like the bits being an error in a pixel. Typically, this is used in the context of Bayesian networks and Markov random fields, like the one below, to model the posterior probability calculation. However, belief propagation is actually applicable to any Markov random process. So where is belief propagation used? AI uses it with neural networks and hidden Markov models, computer vision with object detection and image correction, physics with heat, energy, and electricity flows, and sociology with room propagation and social network modeling. It is generalizable to other algorithms, including the Vertupi algorithm for modeling the most likely sequence of events given their probabilities, and also the Baumlodge algorithm for estimating the parameters of a hidden Markov model. Despite such utility, there are a lot of problems with the belief propagation algorithm as is. Existing implementations, such as the BM package, largely limit themselves to a few thousand nodes. We want to support millions. Um, major GPU graph frameworks like GunRock, NVGraph, and Grout also do not support it. And this is largely due to their uh, over reliance on the CSR CSC format, which has uh, one integer or float per node or edge. However, with the Bayesian networks uh, used in belief propagation, they have many floats for the probabilities. To address these issues, we propose our solution, Credo. With it, we make the following contributions. We provide a fast, flexible info format that scales to massive graphs beyond the thousands of graphs that existing implementations support. In fact, it can scale to millions and billions of edges. We also provide optimized methods for processing graphs by nodes or edges. This includes improvements to the memory footprint and also supporting work queues to optimize the performance of the methods. We support uh, these methods on CPU and GPU platforms. And finally, we provide a mechanism for automatically choosing the best implementation ahead of time based on the graph metadata with portability in mind. Next, I'll provide an example of boot propagation with the following example. It's a slightly tweaked version of the family out problem. A family has a house with a dog and outdoor lights. Sometimes that dog is being punished, and sometimes the, the family puts the dog outside. And lastly, sometimes we can hear the dog barking. Next, we observe that the lights are on and we can hear the dog barking. How does that affect the probabilities that the family is out and the dog is being punished? To begin this process, we send updates about the observed events, that is the uh, lights being on and the dog barking to the neighboring nodes. The neighbor receives the update and updates his own state. That neighbor, in turn sends updates out to its own neighbors, that is family out and being punished. The family out and being punished nodes receive all updates from their descendants and in turn uh, recompute their new states. However, since this is an undirected graph, that means that changes flow in both directions. As a result, the family out and being punished nodes send updates out to their descendants. The dog out node receives the updates 
from the family out and being punished notes and updates its state for the final computation. Since we know for a fact that the lights are on and that we can hear the dog barking, we do not change these states as they are pr pretty much set in stone. What I presented was the traditional belief propagation algorithm. However, there is a variant called loopy belief propagation. It follows the same basic steps, but instead of sending updates level by level and then back down again in two steps, it sends all the updates out at once. It then uh, loops through these steps continuously until the beliefs converge to within a certain predefined threshold. It has many advantages compared to the traditional approach, including uh, lower overhead, being more amenable to uh, parallelization, and it can actually work for all graphs instead of just trees, like uh, traditional belief propagation. We refine the uh, loopy uh, belief propagation algorithm in our work. Uh, this is to address the major issue of having a unique static joint probability matrix per edge. Uh, this matrix is uh, derived uh, from pre statistics that describes the uh, likelihood of an event being in a certain state. However, for our large graph, uh, this matrix is likely not uh, to differ much. For example, the probability that a pixel being an error in a 1 million by 1 million uh, pixel image is not likely to differ from much from the upper right hand corner versus the lower left hand corner. Instead, what we'll do is use a singular joint probability matrix for the entire graph for considerable performance gains. With a 10,000 node benchmark, we achieved over a thousand X speed up. And with a 2 million node benchmark, we achieved over 11,000 X speed up uh, with this change in place. So this is research uses GPUs as part of its optimization efforts. It's worth talking about GPU architecture for a moment. An NVIDIA GPU consists of many CUDA cores executing a a single GPU thread per core. This thread has access to its own uh, local memory. The threads themselves are organized into warps of 32 and execute in blocks with access to a fast per block shared memory, typically of size uh, 4 kilobytes. These uh, blocks are organized in turn with in thread grids with access to a slow but extremely large uh, global memory and a constant read-only memory cache and a rebindable, that is, resettable texture memory cache. To achieve parallelism, one can use high-level APIs like OpenMP and OpenACC versus dedicated programming languages like CUDA. Uh, both of these use pragma statements to annotate blocks as hints to the compiler about which uh, variables are unique per thread versus which ones can be shared across all threads, or uh, define which uh, operations must be uh, done atomically versus uh, be done in a uh, parallel reduction, or a uh, hint to the compiler about uh, vectorization instructions. OpenMP is for CPUs while OpenACC is for GPUs. However, their syntax is very similar. Although Cradle does not use uh, either of these uh, APIs, they're useful in designing our uh, Google implementations. We're comparing our OpenMP and OpenACC implementations against our single thread C implementation. We find that the results are not great. As we scale the, uh, the number of cores up, we see that the performance degrades with it. OpenMP has a high schedule or overhead, uh, which is not helping. Compounding this problem is that uh, there is a tail distribution of work uh, in which a few threads are occupying most of the processing time. The uh, default OpenMP scheduler attempts to evenly distribute the work. 
across uh, the course, which results in uh, waiting around for a few threads uh, to complete since they occupy the, the majority of the processing time. There is a second uh, scheduler, the dynamic thread pool scheduler, uh, that OpenMP has to address this problem. However, due to the uh, amount of work being done per thread, uh, it actually degrades the performance even more. Uh, this is uh, due to uh, the uh, threads having short executions of uh, frequent memory lookups. Hyperthreading compounds this problem even further uh, due to the memory lookups uh, stalling the shared pipeline of two threads. OpenMP, OpenACC is a little bit better with a 1.25x uh, speed up. However, it is unable to precisely uh, compute the convergence check due to the limitations of the API, uh, which re uh, limits its uh, potential for speed up. It uh, simply just lacks the finer optimizations and uh, specifications available with CUDA. And thus we uh, opt to use CUDA for our Prello uh, implementations. Having presented the introduction and background, I'll next move on to the design of CUDA. Credo is a suite of optimizations and the classifiers who automatically choose the best implementation to use. It has uh, four parts, an MTX-based input graph format for massive graphs of hundreds of millions of nodes and billions of edges, optimized methods for processing a graph by node or edge, encompassing uh, memory optimizations and workload improvements, including work queues, Support for these methods on both CPU and GPU platforms, which significantly outperform uh, prior work. And finally, a portable method for automatically choosing the ideal implementation use for a given graph ahead of time. Existing implementations of the belief propagation algorithm typically use the Bayesian network format, BIF, or its XML-based sibling, XML-BIF. However, there's a major problem with these two formats. They are not scalable beyond a few thousand nodes. In fact, we can only hold uh, a graph of 100,000 nodes and 400,000 edges with our benchmark uh, system holding 32 gigs of memory before running out of memory. And in fact, it uh, spends more time uh, parsing those two formats than actually running leaf propagation. To address this issue, we extend the MTX uh, graph format uh, for leaf propagation. Uh, the traditional MTX uh, format simply lists out the source node ID, the target node ID, and th the weight for the edge. To encode uh, Bayesian network data in this format, we have one uh, file for nodes and one file for edges. After the node IDs, we encode uh, the beliefs as floats. With this format, we are able to represent graphs with over 2 million nodes and 200 million edges, and is actually extendable to any random process where in we have uh, nodes associated with probabilities. Using this uh, format on that same 100,000 node, 400,000 uh, edge graph yields a 33x speed up uh, compared to the BIF XML format in which the processing time went from 8.4 seconds down to 0.28 seconds. After parsing the graph, Credo then runs belief propagation on that same graph with one of two methods, either by node or by edge. In the node case, for each step of the loopy belief propagation algorithm we described earlier, we pull the state of each parent, which is a single uh, array of, of 
floats, combine the, uh, that uh, state with the, the joint probability matrix via matrix multiplication, and then combine all those updates with the parents via the short product. Afterwards, we combine that combined single update with the current child's uh, state by the short product for the new state of that child. Alternatively, we can process a, a graph by edge. For each edge, we pull the state of the source node of the edge. We then multiply that state with the joint probability matrix to generate a single update to the destination node. We combine the destination node state atomically by the short product to be able to update all incoming edges to a given node in parallel. This is in contrast to being able to do the node updates uh, independently in parallel, as described beforehand. To maximize the performance of Credo, we make multiple optimizations to the internal data structures used in the system. We utilize a compressed adjacency list for representing the edges to the nodes. By indexing, we achieve quick lookups and minimize data footprints while also being able to uh, achieve more consistent memory accesses uh, for our CUDA implementations. In addition, we utilize the single static joint probability matrix optimization from beforehand uh, to is drastically minimize the amount of data we're storing. Finally, after comparing uh, an array of structs and a structs of an array of method of storing the data, we ultimately go with the array of structs approach since it has 56% fewer cache misses compared to the structs of an array approach. Additionally, we optimize how we process the graphs themselves using work queues. This is to address the issue that most nodes and edges converge uh, rather quickly and that much of the processing time is uh, occupied by a few nodes or edges. In other words, it is uh, demonstrating a tail distribution of uh, work. To address this issue, uh, we use only a work queue of uh, nodes or edges that have not converged yet for processing belief propagation instead of performing needless work on nodes and edges, which will not change much uh, for a given step. We manage this queue by atomic operations while checking convergence so that we can maximize uh, the uh, parallelism of our solutions while ensuring consistency. Credo parallelizes the belief propagation algorithm using CUDA. This is based off of our C implementations of the node and edge paradigms described earlier using our previous work with OpenMP and OpenACC as a guide. It includes many of the same atomic operations but implemented in CUDA. In addition, we uh, likewise minimize the CPU GPU transfers whenever possible, like with the OpenACC implementation. This is uh, only sending the uh, convergence check to the CPU from the GPU until the, it passes, and at which point it sends the final state of the graph back to the CPU. In addition, it makes use of several CUDA specific optimizations, including performing the convergence check by our reduction sum using shared memory storing the static joint probability matrix in constant memory and uh, batching to uh, minimize uh, transfers between the CPU and GPU even further. With our two paradigms, it is sometimes hard to tell which one is uh, best uh, for a given graph. We know that uh, the high overhead of CUDA that uh, graphs Below a thousand nodes are generally better on the CPU versus uh, on the GPU. To address this issue, we attempt to use the uh, graph metadata that we obtain during parsing to try to predict uh, 
the best approach for a given graph and include that in Credo. This metadata includes the number of nodes in the graph, the ratio of nodes to edges in a graph, the number of leaves encoded in each edge, the degree in balance or the a ratio of the max in degree to the max out degree of an, the nodes, and the skew, which is the ratio of the average in degree to the maximum in degree of the nodes. We then assign a label, either edge or node, that is making this a binary classification problem. We next evaluate Kratom. For our benchmark data, we have 132 graphs ranging from 10 nodes and 40 edges to 21 million nodes and 265 million edges. It includes uh, permutations for our three use cases, that is a binary true or false network, a virus propagation simulation in which uh, a person can be infected, uninfected, and recovering, and finally uh, an image error detection system in which a picture uh, consisting of uh, pixels can have each of the pixels bits being an error. The system we evaluated Credo on was a Core i7 with, with four physical cores and four virtual cores and a an NVIDIA GTX 1070 with 1920 CUDA processors, 8 gig uh, bytes of VRAM and a block size of 1024 threads. In addition, it has uh, 32 gigabytes of memory. For our first test, we compare our C implementations against our CUDA implementations. For graphs smaller than 1,000 nodes, the C implementations uh, will outperform the CUDA implementations due to the high overhead of CUDA, including GPU memory allocation and transfer, CUDA uh, kernel launch, synchronization, and memory stalls. However, as we use uh, larger graphs, the CUDA implementations outperform the C implementations with the C edge uh, versions achieving a 3.4x speedup in the node versions achieving at best 120x speedup due to the uh, fact that the node implementations are performing more iterations uh, compared to the edge implementations. When looking at how the number of leaves affects the performance of the uh, good implementations, we see that the speed up for nodes actually decreases uh, beyond the three leaf threshold, while the speed up for edges is rather consistent at about a, a factor of 10, regardless of the number of leaves. In addition, looking at how uh, the size of the graph affects the performance, we see that the edge implementations are bound by the atomic operations uh, that it performs on the updates for each step, in addition to the atomic operations used to manage the work queues regardless of implementation. In contrast, the node implementations have much more uh, memory lookups uh, and consequently suffer as the degree of the graph increases. Next, we look at uh, how turning the work queue optimizations on and off affects the performance. We see speed ups uh, across all implementations except for the C edge, which suffers a slight 10% uh, drop in performance. However, there are significant uh, speed ups, particularly for the node versions an 87x speed up for the C node uh, versions and an 83x speed up for the CUDA node versions. The reason why the uh, node implementations are far more amenable to work queues is that the node implementations run for far more iterations than the edge versions. Uh, typically, the edge implementations converge uh, in under 10 uh, steps while the Node implementations converge after 3240. The work queues also uh, at the overhead of atomic operations. Uh, the edge implementations have additional uh, atomic operations used uh, 
uh, for managing uh, the combined updates, which uh, limits their performance. In addition, there's uh, some hardware differences between the CPU and GPU platforms we're using, which account for the difference in the, the overhead of the atomic operations and subsequent performance of the implementations. Compared to prior work, Credo does a lot better. Ma processed a 4,000 node graph using MapReduce in four seconds, while Credo can do it in about one millisecond. Gonzales in 2009 processed a 460,000 node graph using MapReduce in 12 seconds, while Credo can process a similar graph in under a second. Gonzales in 2010 could process a 56,000 node graph using porting servers using open NPI and pthreads in uh, 6.4 seconds, while we can process a similar graph in under a tenth of a second. And finally, Kang uh, in 2011 processed billions of edges uh, with open NPI in hours, while we can process a similar graph using just two to three seconds. Next, we describe our classification efforts. We know from observation that the C and CUDA trade-off occurs between 1,000 and 100,000 nodes. Nevertheless, it's still very hard to tell when a given node or edge implementation is best. To address this issue, we try to model it as a machine learning classification task. We use up to 95 graph variations with uh, complete data and have a 60-40 trained test split in a three-fold cross-validation. The graph below uh, shows how we scale the uh, size of the graph and how it impacts the F1 score and the error bars. We use uh, several classifiers available from scikit-learn, including support vector machines, decision trees, naive bays, random forest, gradient boosting, k-nearest neighbors, Gaussian process, and multi-layer perceptron. Looking over the results, we see that the tree-based classifiers are well suited for this task. They need only about 40 samples before attaining a 90% accuracy with the F1 scores. In fact, the RAM force attained nearly 95% accuracy. Uh, questions which impact the other classifiers and inhibit them from doing well include the covariances amongst the features, features being mostly ratios, and the small data size. Nevertheless, below uh, 40, uh, graphs, all classifiers overfit. Next, we compare running the full Credo system against always just choosing the C edge implementation. At first, there's uh, very little improvement since Credo uh, tends to use the C uh, edge implementation for small graphs. However, as the uh, graph size increases and the GPU uh, benefits outstrip its overheads, Credo is able to uh, approach the 127x speed that we previously found with our uh, CUDA implementations. Finally, we look at running Credo on an unseen architecture, which is a Volta V100. It is able to classify uh, the graphs accurately about 70% of the time, yet with the extra CUDA course, it is now able to attain over 180x speed up in its best cases. This loss of accuracy is due to the differences of the threat schedulers used for the different platforms. The CUDA edge implementations consequently outperform the CUDA no implementations in more cases, but not significantly. Uh, this is about an average of 300th of a second. So regardless of which implementation Credo chooses, belief propagation occurs very quickly. Thus, we have presented Credo. It consists of a simple graph input format that's scalable to massive size graphs, optimized node and edge-based implementations, utilizing a slew of enhancements, including support for GPU architectures, and finally, a portable a priori method for choosing the best implementation for a given graph given its metadata.